Undoubtedly, the thunderous power of SpaceX's first test flight of Starship, the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, inflicted serious damage on the Texas launch site. Flying chunks of concrete, twisted metal sheets, and craters blasted deep into the ground. The scene around the launch pad is one of the biggest desolations ever. Although SpaceX CEO Elon Musk optimistically predicted that the site could be ready to launch again in one to two months, experts suggest it could take up to a year to restore the site to operational status. The severity of the damage has raised concerns among NASA officials about the SpaceX pad in Florida. How will this delay Starship's flight from Florida? We'll learn more about that today in this episode of Alpha Tech. NASA leadership has a lot to say after today's explosive first test flights of the SpaceX Starship. With so much banking on the successful development of the massive stainless steel vehicle, NASA leaders took opportunity to hail today's flight test as an important step forward in the agency's moon plans. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson praising the launch, congratulating SpaceX, and writing on Twitter that every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk because with great risk comes great reward. Looking forward to all that SpaceX learns to the next test flight and beyond. NASA Associate Administrator for Exploration System Development Jim Free likewise shared his enthusiasm on Twitter, writing that Starship will help move the agency toward a crewed landing on the moon as part of the Artemis program. Quote, looking forward to learning from the data SpaceX captured as they continue to develop the Starship human landing system and prepare for their next flight test, is what Free wrote. Actually, it serves not only as a commendation, but also as a reminder to SpaceX. Asked by the subcommittee chairman, Representative Hal Rogers of Kentucky, why SpaceX was launching from Texas rather than Cape Canaveral, Nelson said that the agency expected SpaceX to probably do five launches from there before moving to the launch pad they're building for Starship at the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. Once they get through and get some experience, then they will bring that rocket to Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. Scientist Philip Metzger, who previously worked for NASA on launch pad physics, said he thought the steel plate plan could have been a good solution. However, the problem is that this is such a large rocket, it takes so long to get off the pad, the heat from the rocket's 33 engines possibly could melt the steel. Honestly, NASA's concerns are understandable. Even since last year, NASA's been worried SpaceX's Starship could destroy the iconic launch pad 39A. NASA wants SpaceX to provide assurance that Starship launches will not risk damaging nearby launch infrastructure. The iconic pad 39A is a pillar of space history. It was used for NASA's Apollo 11 launch, as well as a number of other historic launches, including SpaceX's first astronaut launch, Demo 2. According to a Reuters report, NASA's worried that a Starship explosion could cause substantial damage, which SpaceX currently uses 39A to launch astronauts to the ISS for the U.S. Space Agency. NASA also plans to use the celebrated complex to send its SLS space launch system to the moon. While SpaceX officials highlighted that its SN high altitude launches were test flights that provided a great deal of useful data, the massive fireballs caused by the Starship prototypes provide a stark indicator of the damage that could occur if an unplanned explosion took place in Florida. We all recognize that if you had an early failure like we did on one of the early SpaceX flights, it could be very devastating to 39A, Kathy Luters, NASA's Space Operations Chief, told Reuters in an interview. SpaceX is working with us on those things, Luters explained, because it's also in their best interest to not have what's a pretty steady source of income for them become interrupted. SpaceX is reportedly investigating ways to strengthen 39A against a potential explosion and against the immense force of a successful Starship launch. The company's fully reusable launch vehicle will produce 17 million pounds of thrust. That's thanks to the Raptor V2, and it'll have the power to launch a massive 300,000 pounds or 150 tons of payload into orbit. However, after what Starship's first orbital flight caused at Starbase, SpaceX will acquire additional data to enhance safety measures at the Florida launch pad. 
Finally, another important question is whether SpaceX's failed Starship flight will delay NASA's plans to go to the moon. NASA wants to use a modified version of the Starship spacecraft called the Starship Human Landing System, or HLS, for the Artemis III mission, which would be the first crewed lunar landing since 1972. The astronauts would reach space on NASA's recently tested Orion spacecraft, while SpaceX's Super Heavy would power the Starship HLS to orbit. The Starship would then transfer to the SpaceX vehicle for lunar landing. Artemis III is currently scheduled in 2025, but a lot has to go right for NASA to be able to stick to that plan. First and foremost, the Super Heavy and Starship HLS have to be ready. Following the latest mission, Musk tweeted that SpaceX hopes to try again with the Starship in a few months. That mission will be crucial to NASA's hopes of landing the first woman and first person of color on the lunar surface in just two years from now. NASA also has to confirm the safety and reliability of the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft. The early signs are good, as both the rocket and spacecraft performed pretty much flawlessly on a recent uncrewed test flight that sent the Orion on a flyby of the moon. Artemis II, scheduled for next year, will send four astronauts on the same voyage in what will hopefully be the final test of Orion before Artemis III. Considering the current situation, NASA will do well to make the 2025 target date for the crewed lunar landing. To give it any real hope, SpaceX will surely have to succeed in getting the Starship to orbit on its next test flight. Once SpaceX engineers have fully assessed why the Starship failed to separate from Super Heavy last Thursday, it should be apparent if the solution is a quick fix or a more serious issue that needs more time to resolve. Remember, there isn't just one Starship vehicle that spent years in the development pipeline. The company's thrown together a fleet of the vehicles, tweaking each one as testing continues. Because the vehicles are relatively quite cheap, it's not a huge setback if one explodes. Rather, the explosion offers crucial data that informs how the design will change moving forward. If you look at anybody else, they take a decade or more to develop a rocket, said John Meritor, who spent 24 years with NASA at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and worked at SpaceX for a decade and is now an engineering consultant. We put out new versions and improvements all the time. SpaceX already has a lineup of new Super Heavy boosters and Starship spacecraft to test. The SpaceX rocket that flew Thursday was really a bare bones, Reisman added. There were no fancy accoutrements, no seats for passengers, no valuable satellite in the cargo bay. Murator said engineers refer to that type of bare bones vehicle as the minimum viable product, and their design, quote, to answer the question of an unknown, purely to better inform future vehicles. Whatever happens going forward, it's certain that Musk's dream of using the Super Heavy Starship to send humans beyond the moon to Mars remains intact. It's just going to take a while. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.